What's going on everybody? Hope you're all doing well. It is insanely cold in New York City right now and it's uncomfortable to go outside. So just chilling here, making a video. Not like I would be doing anything else anyway. One of the most common topics that people have been asking about is more about the work-life issues and complications, obstacles that an engineer might go through. So I wanted to dedicate this video actually to talk about this thing called micromanaging. If you haven't been through this, I'm 100% sure you'll go through it or become a micromanager sometime in your life. It's pretty self-explanatory and I'm pretty sure you already know what it kind of means. So I'm not gonna try to define it. With regards to engineering, micromanaging can sometimes feel like you're really implementing someone else's thoughts and it's not a really good feeling. In this video, I wanted to share my experience personally with being micromanaged, what I did pretty poorly, what I could have done better, and just some insights I've gained about what it was like and how to deal with it a little better. So without further ado, let's just start the video. And I think this one's gonna be pretty long. So hope you enjoy it. So during my first position out of school in California, I actually switched teams after my first year and at the start of my second year, I was actually part of this brand new team. The tricky thing about this situation was it was actually my new manager's first time of managing someone. That would be me. So it was very new for both of us. It was her first time managing someone and it was, I was new anyway, and I was just thrown under a new team. At the time, when you're so new working at this big company, you kind of overlook the whole management politics side of the company and all you care about is kind of working on cool things, making a mark for yourself, et cetera, et cetera. You kind of overlooked management. Well, at least I overlooked it. This was when I really got the impression that management was more or less a chore for a lot of people. I remember my original manager, when we first talked, he was like, yeah, we'll have status updates every month. We'll catch up, talk about your problems. I literally talked to him one time the whole year when I had my first performance review. So not exactly every single month, right? Long story short, before we get into a lot of the details, but under this new manager during my second year, I just felt heavily, heavily micromanaged as an engineer. Micromanagement in engineering can take many forms. Your manager could email you almost every day asking for status updates he or she could review every single line of code you write. There's so many examples of micromanaging, but I think the core issue at hand is just an inherent distrust between two people. As with many other things in life, if you have an internal gut feeling of this mistrust and you have a gut feeling of being somewhat micromanaged, you are being micromanaged. So you'll feel it when it happens. The first thing that I wanted to do in this video is first empathize and put ourselves in the manager's shoes a little bit because we can't just off the bat and say that, oh, that was a shitty manager. We have to first understand where they're coming from before we can really understand how this is working. Everyone has a different circumstance that you have to consider. The first almost most common reason of a micromanager is that, remember, everyone answers to someone. Your manager answers to someone else and the chain just keeps going up all the way to, you know, God. Your manager wants to look good for their superiors and your work reflects on them. So obviously, whatever you do is a reflection on them. So that leads to a lot of that control and micromanaging sometimes. Everyone answers to someone, everyone, okay, everyone. Another really common form of micromanaging, especially in the engineering realm, is when you have an engineering manager who is particularly stubborn or has a really big ego. This is kind of like the second most common use case. When you find yourself implementing work and you know or you feel like you didn't think about it yourself, then you might be getting micromanaged. The last point for empathizing and putting ourselves in the manager's shoes is you have to take into consideration the mindset of your manager. Maybe it's their personality. Maybe they're not really used to letting go, or maybe they're actually control freaks. You can't attribute good engineering to control freaks, right? 
actually paying attention to detail is usually a good attribute of an engineer, but sometimes that kind of backfires when you're a manager. So if someone is naturally a control freak, many people actually are a control freak. I think we're all guilty of being that, but that can actually easily lead to like kind of symptoms and traits of micromanaging. And it has nothing to do or reflects your engineering skills at all. It's just your previous mindset and habits. So that's my last point about kind of putting ourselves in the point of view of the managers. Remember that they're people too, they're trying to learn too, and they're not gonna be doing their job perfectly. So before we make any rash assumptions on crap, that's a crappy micromanager, just make sure to take a step back and really think about what they're going through and their circumstances. That's the baseline, what we have to do. Okay, so we've just put ourselves into the manager's shoes a little bit to empathize a little bit with them. What I'm gonna do in this part is go through three basic steps in order about potentially what an engineer could do if you're being micromanaged. The first thing, the very first thing we should do is first ask ourselves, do a little bit of that introspection and just ask, is there a real reason that I'm being micromanaged? Do you not listen to instructions at all? Are you terribly inconsistent with your work? I hope the answer to these questions are no, but if the answer to those questions are uh, maybe, then you already stop there. Maybe you should be micromanaged if you're not pulling your own weight. Overall, this should be a really easy gut call. You'll know yourself if you're doing a good job or you're kind of slacking, and I hope you're not slacking. Consider your work very truthfully and maybe it's the root cause of all of this. That's the first step and make sure do that step first. All these steps are gonna go in order. Second, like I said before, you'll kind of know it in your gut if you're being micromanaged. And if you know also in your gut that you're producing your work well, then maybe there's another more deeper issue at hand. My first advice for this is to openly talk with your manager about it and this is probably the most difficult thing to do and one of the things I did a really terrible job with when I was my second year of working. I remember specifically during that time, my manager actually came out and asked me directly herself. She asked me, hey, can we talk a little bit just about our work, our process, how are you liking things? There was so much going on in my mind at the time but I remember I kind of dismissed it and I didn't really address any of the real issues and it just fizzled, up, fizzled out. So all those problems just kept going. If we don't acknowledge or have open dialogues with our manager, these things don't change, right? If we don't acknowledge anything, nothing can change. Overall speaking about issues like these with people, they're hard conversations and they're very hard to start. Usually as a manager, you don't have to bring it up first, but if you have the luxury of your manager bringing it up, I would highly recommend you take advantage of that. My advice for having these open dialogues with your manager, really go back to my first point about really putting yourselves in the shoes of your manager and empathizing with them. Don't make any quick assumptions, just try to take time and put yourselves in their shoes and understand their perspective, and it'll put your assumptions in a much different light. When you have an open dialogue with your manager, we're still on point two, but first you have to be very honest with how you're feeling. And remember, it's how you're feeling first before accusing them of doing anything. You have to first start it off with how you've been feeling recently yourself. Tell them straight up how you're feeling, give a brief overview of what's been on your mind. And lastly, probably one of the most important things is that you have to give a very, very specific example of a time when you felt micromanaged. At this point, they've already know what's on your mind. They're already kind of worried because their manager is complaining. And now you really have to give a concrete example to solidify this because they kind of know how you're feeling. It's still a little wishy-washy, but once you lay down one or two concrete situations, it'll really sink in for both of you guys. All right, so here's an example. One time we were having a code review and you really, really pushed your point of view during that code review and you really didn't like any of the things I implemented. Why exactly was your methodology better than mine? How come you didn't ask any questions about how I implemented it? How, why did you 
Why were you so aggressive with your thoughts? Be as specific as possible. Name the exact code review or name the exact feature that this happened. Okay, so now we're finally on the third and last point of the sequence. Number three is kind of when an open dialogue isn't really working. Maybe your manager is not receptive of this. Maybe he or she is really, really, maybe they really have a big ego and none of this is just sinking in and you've already, you know, stepped out of your comfort zone and brought all this stuff up and nothing's changing. When this happens, it's really time to move on and you have to bring in a third party. This is gonna be different between company and company and how they run their management, but bringing in a third party means you have to discuss this issue with someone else. Maybe this is your boss's boss. Maybe you have to go to him or her directly. Maybe this is HR to start. I promise you there will be someone to go to that isn't your direct manager. There will always be someone else that you can talk with first. My one most important piece of advice for this last step is that nothing will be the same if you take this step. What do I mean by this? Well, if you bring in a third party to discuss this issue with you and your manager, you have to realize that the relationship between you and your manager will really never be the same after that point. Things got so bad, you couldn't resolve it that you really had to ask a third party. So please, you have to take really, really good care if things get to this level. Personally, my biggest mistake was doing step one and jumping too quickly to step three without having enough open dialogue with my manager at the time. I kind of jumped to step three probably a little or a lot more quickly than I really should have. The moment I went to a third party to start resolving this issue of micromanaging I had with the person overseeing my work, it forever changed our relationship and I eventually left the team because of that. The new team I joined, it was like a much more badass team which I was really excited to join, but I can't deny the fact that part of the reason I was even looking to join something else was that I had this internal thing going on with my manager, this micromanaging thing. I just wanna reiterate this point again because I feel it's very important but if you've done steps one and two with your manager and you feel the situation still isn't resolved, step three is really a relationship disrupting, changing step. So my number one piece of advice from me going through this situation and for everyone out there who might be going through something similar to this is that really, really take great care and put your own effort into part two, the open dialogues. I jumped from step one to step three a little too quickly without putting enough of sincere effort in part two and it's probably one of my biggest regrets for my early professional career. Overall, you know, what's done is done. This whole thing that I went through maybe lasted about half a year or so. It was a great learning experience for me and hindsight, I can reflect a little bit and talk about it now. but. It really sucked at the time and I didn't really go about it the right way. So I hope if anyone's going through this, this advice is helpful and you know, you deal with it well. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. And let's just do a quick recap a bit to summarize. The first thing you have to do is remember, introspect yourself and make sure there's no reason that you should be micromanaged. If you're slacking, not responsible, not delivering, then you, you, can't even have this conversation. Step two is remember, have a sincere, open dialogue with your manager where you really try to empathize first and see where they're coming from. See yourself in your manager's shoes. Don't make any rash assumptions. Finally, step three is only used when open dialogue really isn't working or improving the situation. You have to bring in third parties to help you deal with the situation. And remember, Step three, if you get to this point, it's really gonna disrupt the relationship after that. All right guys, hope you enjoyed this video. It was kind of just a reflection on some of the stuff I went through. Nothing too technical here, but I hope my experience and my thoughts around this might be helpful for anyone out there that's been thinking about this stuff. Um, please, you know, ask me any questions in the comments. Drop me a like if you like this video. And again, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. All right, take care and have a great week.